Vauxhall in South London, an eclectic mix of inner city building style and a suitable setting for a teaching challenge featuring one of the country's most distinctive architects, Gillian Horn. She's planning to teach architecture to a geography class. A lot of the projects I enjoy designing are in fact schools and so it's interesting to be here and able to, to come into a class and teach. I think probably what happens with the, with the children here, well, with everyone around, that they don't realise they're living in a design place and that they, they've forgotten to look. And, and I think a lot of what architecture can do in a, and a thinking about architecture is just beginning to open your eyes and see what's around you in a different way and realising you know, all the streets and all the houses and all the, all the buildings they're, they're passing have been designed by someone for a reason. Gillian will be hoping to deliver that eye-opening lesson at Lillian Bayless Technology School, where Year 10 pupils are studying a subject that's been the topic of much debate amongst educationalists. Year 10's passionate geography teacher is Sean Kennedy. I think when you get somebody in from the outside, it really enriches their learning experience. And from a geography aspect, um, it's, I think it's good for them to see how they can transfer the skills that they would develop in geography across into the field of work. Because a lot of students don't know how they, would, how they would use geography in the workplace or what kind of job it would get them. Geography seems to be one of these declining subjects on the curriculum. Um, every year there's a decrease in the number of pupils that are taking it for GCSE and A-level. And um, I just think it's really sad because it's such an interesting subject. It's so contemporary and um, so much stuff goes on in the news that kids are able to understand better if they've got a grasp of geography. And um, But unfortunately, this is a school that's suffering from it as well. We're not going to offer GCSE geography next year. We're doing a move into BTEC travel and tourism. And what teaching tips does Shan have for her guest teacher? I think when Gillian's teaching her lesson, she needs to make sure that she's got the attention of the students, that she doesn't talk when they're talking, because that's just a sign that they're not listening. Um, a good way to get our students engaged is to use lots of visual things, because the literacy is a little bit low in this school, so they really respond well to photographs and things like that, and just to relax and have a good time. I have to admit I'm slightly nervous about going into a, to a lesson of 14 year olds. It's, <laughs> it's adolescent time and um, perhaps some, <laughs> some grumpiness and a lack of interest. But I hope that um, to be able to, you know, to switch their minds a little bit, perhaps about some of their preconceptions about architecture and architects and to, to get them excited about it and feeling that they can participate. As Year 10 pupils begin to arrive outside the classroom, Shan and her guest teacher go through teaching materials for the lesson before the moment of teaching truth arrives. After a brief introduction from Shan, Gillian begins her attempt to put architectural theory into teaching practice. Now, this morning I'm going to try to introduce you to architecture, the world that I live and work in and think about, and try to get you thinking about architecture. But to start that, I thought I'd start here, with some trainers. Because I thought maybe you might know a little bit more about trainers than you think you know about architecture. Does anyone want to tell me what they think about this? They're cool? You don't like them? Who do you think would wear these? Basketballers. Basketballers, yeah. That was just a really, just a warm up to try to get you thinking of ways of which you can think about something and, and know whether you like it or not. And I want you to start thinking in that same sort of way and we can start looking at buildings together. And I've got a little sort of game I've devised for you all to play. And I think that it's probably best if we go in groups of three, two or three, doesn't really matter. But I've got some little packs here. There's 22 pictures in these, and they, they're each in pairs. So there's pairs of buildings or places. And the, what I'd like you to do first is, in your, in your, with the person next to you, put them out and try and match them. And to think, which building do you think goes with the other? And as you look at them, maybe start thinking about, what is this building? What do you think happens here? What, what, what might go with that? Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting, because you know what, in fact, that building is? One of our designs. It's a hospital. Yeah, it's a children's hospital. <laughs> so, so you often can't tell 
it, we, we specifically designed to try and make it not look like a hospital, because who wants to go to hospital? I mean, no children want to go to hospital, do they? They want to go somewhere where they might actually think that's an exciting building. That's fantastic. I'm pleased that you've all put them into their pairs. And in a minute, we'll see how well you've done in matching the buildings. And on the screen here, I've actually put up all the different, the 11 building types that we've got here. And it might surprise you already seeing that, that we've got a mixture, that one of these buildings is a hospital. I don't know if, if any of you realise that. One, for instance, is an old people's home. Um, and whether that surprised you, because none of them, to me, obviously look like somewhere where my granny might live. But before we actually go into what pairs with which, I'd first like to hear from you about what you think about some of the pictures and whether, for instance, you've got any favourites. Cyrus? This one stands out for me because it looks different than all the others. I'm going to show everyone else what that one is. What do you think that one might be? Do you know what kind of building it might be? I think it looks it's kind of like a child's hospital. Mm. Like that. Yeah, it's a good, good guess. Anyone else? What do they think that building might be? Could those be houses? Housing? Yeah, for old people. Yeah, that's what, yeah, you've got it. Any thoughts about where it might be, this building? Have you seen it in London anywhere? No. Mm -hmm. No? Definitely not. It's in Amsterdam. Yeah, yeah, they're quite forward-thinking in design there. And it's, it's quite interesting, because that what these are called... Anyone know what it's called when a, build, when a bit of a building stands out on its own? Because, look, it's got no legs, it's got no columns holding it up. Scary. It's scary, it is. It'd be pretty scary. I've stood underneath there, and it is strange. And so this building has to be held up. Instead of being held up on the columns, effectively, these walls are like big beams. And so this whole side of the wall is held up on the back of the building. Anyone know what, what pair? What did you pair with this? Adam, what do you think? Uh, yeah, we thought this one. Yeah, you got it. This is the back of that building. So the cantilevers, those, the big bits that stick out to get extra flats in, are on one side. And the other side, it's a big block. It's still quite funky and it's got lots of balconies sticking out. Do you like it? Yeah, uh, it's colourful. Yeah. Which is quite unusual, isn't it? Any other thoughts? Audrey, what's your favourite? This one. Ah, that's an interesting one. Anyone else like this? I'm pleased you said that. It's one of mine. <laughs> Not on my own, of course. We don't work on our own, not in buildings this size. But it's, it's one that I worked in on in our office. What do you think it might be? Anyone, what do you think might happen in here, Audrey? The library. The library. Any other thoughts about what this building might be? I think it might be a club. A club. That's interesting. It's neither of those. Brian, what do you think it might be? We paired it up with this one, and this looks like a sort of hospital. Yeah. Hey, you're on the nose. This is the pair. And this is actually a children's hospital that we designed. It's fantastic that you think it's a club or a library because that's what we wanted. Because we want it to look like it's an interesting place to go and not a scary place. We do the same with schools. Because anyone see a school in their, in their set? I think it's perhaps the easiest to spot. This one might be a school here. Yeah, that is a school. Well done, Adam. So this is the pair of schools. So you can tell it's a school. But hopefully in the design, it might not look too schooly like which is another important thing that we try and do, because some buildings people don't want to go to. And so we and other architects try and design them to make them places that they might be more interesting and that they feel that they might want to go to them. I'm going to quickly run through now and give you some of the answers. So this one is the, the club, and the outside of it is in fact that. It's a civic halls, it's Wolverhampton civic halls that in the office we refurbished and added on these new glass boxes to an old building. What do people think this one is? That looks weird. <laughs> What's weird about it? The shape. Yeah, it's unusual, isn't it? We've also done this one. This is a school in Nottingham, and that's the outside of the school. I think most of you got that, didn't you? How about this one? Anyone know what this was? Max? Church. Church? No? It's good, interesting. Ryan, what do you think? Is it a train station? Yeah. Do you know which one? Now revitalised St Pancras station, and that's it. So it's the new Eurostar terminal. Yeah. So it's, it, but this one particularly shows, hopefully lots of them, and outside of the building might look really different to what's happening inside. You would never guess, would you? And it was designed as a railway station, so it's not converted. But hopefully what, I, what you might have learnt from this lesson, what I was trying to get across, is just how surprising architecture can be. 
and the fact that it's all around you. The city itself is a designed place and it's for you to be able to look at just as much as you can look at trainers and you can think they're nice, they're not nice, they're worth it, they're not worth it, whether you want them or what use you might have with them or how they could be better. It's the same with buildings because you've got as much ability to like as, as, as I have or any of us have. The biggest lesson I've learned in architecture is just learning to look. That's the key. Do you think you might, be, might do that? Open your eyes a bit, because architecture's there for all of us to live our lives better. And if we, if we start looking at it and start noticing it and wanting more from it, then we'll get more. And, and we will get a, a city full of these kinds of buildings. Well, thank you all. Fantastic um, effort that you've put in, and I've really enjoyed it. And I think you did really well. And um, thank thanks a lot. You normally clap your teachers. <laughs> I, thought, I thought the card match idea was really good. I thought it worked really well. They were all um, looking at the photographs and I think you challenged quite a few of their perceptions there. I think that was good. Oh, good. I know, they, they did, they did um, behave in some of the ways that I was hoping and that they didn't get some of the buildings that, yeah. that, um, that they weren't supposed to get. So I was quite pleased that, that it did sort of challenge some of their ideas about what they thought certain building types might look like. Yeah, definitely. I thought it was really good. And especially some of the kids seemed to really get into it and give you some good answers. Yeah, I know. It was really, it was really interesting. It was also interesting to, to hear what they liked and didn't like. Sometimes it was a bit of a surprise. Like, yeah. um, I think it was Audrey who, who didn't like King's Cross and Pancras because it was old fashioned. And, and often, you know, we're, we're more culturally trained, I think, to, to like old buildings and think they're more special and important than new ones. So I was quite pleased actually yeah. to hear that, that they were sort of open to some of this sort of more modern and contemporary ways of designing and thinking about buildings. So would you do it again? Oh, I'd certainly do it again, yeah. yeah it'd be lo lovely to follow up actually and yeah. actually make it a sort of a, a course and, and to have, I'd, I think architecture training in schools would be a fantastic benefit to us all anyway, so, yeah, <laughs> so perhaps could we could come and have another go. Definitely, yeah. that sounds like a really interesting idea. And perhaps the next lesson, which was which I was vying with with this one, is actually to look at architecture and climate change as well, which is obviously key to our work now and will be increasingly so. And I think that might tie really well in with what some of the work hopefully are doing in geography. Oh, definitely. If the kids are so into climate change at the moment, it's such a prominent issue, I think that could be really exciting for them. This could be the start of a beautiful relationship between those with their feet on the ground and the rarefied world of architecture. It changed my um, feelings for architects. It did because I thought it was just like a boring thing, but later on I was like, actually it does deal with designs and things like that. It's not only about building stuff and just selling them off, it's about sitting down with a group of people then having to design like a masterpiece to make it like a big thing, yeah. And like, I think I want to do that in my future job. Uh.